Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Springdale 253FWRE. The RE of course stands for Rear Entertainment and that's exactly what this is, a Rear Entertainment fifth wheel. You'll see the dual opposing slides here in the living area and what separates a rear living from rear entertainment is the back wall. Most of your rear living floor plans will have a sofa here. Rear entertainment generally has your entertainment center. And uh, you can see that is kind of the, the focal point of this entertainment, or, the, or rather of this living space. Uh, a couple of cool things we will notice is you'll see that they did put uh, some auxiliary lighting up top. You have a little LED light there helping to kind of brighten up this space a little bit. Uh, they also put the same thing underneath your dinette seats. In this super slide, you have the dinette as well as your sofa. I am glad they put the lighting on top and bottom. I think it kind of helps make it up for uh, your light right here. I personally am not a huge fan of this, right? I think it looks gorgeous. I think, you know, it, not gorgeous, but I think it looks good. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Um, I think they did a decent job in the light fixture itself as far as aesthetics. My issue with it is that a lot of times at night, I like to play games or when I'm eating a meal, I like to have a lot of light. It does make it a little more intimate if you're uh, eating, but for that, I'd rather have a dimmer switch if I want to bring the lights down. It's just for me, this isn't quite bright enough. Uh, you know, I mean, you can kind of see, you know, up in the corners here, just, well, I mean, our camera does a great job on low light, so it probably looks fantastic, but uh, it is just a little bit darker. So not a huge deal, not a deal breaker. Um, again, I think it looks good. I just wish that it was a little bit brighter bulbs. That being said, and moving forward, you will see the dinette itself, the table. I do like the table because it's removable. So if you want to take it out of there completely, you can do that. It swings down nice and easily as well. And the reason I do like that is because you can take this table, you can drag it over to the sofa here, drop it down, and it now becomes a coffee table, which, you know, in a travel trailer like this, when you have this much space, it's pretty convenient. A lot of travel trailers, you can't, or a lot of fifth wheels, sorry, you can't do that because you just don't have the space here in the, in the living area, but in this one, you certainly do. And also, of course, when it does drop down, I don't know if I mentioned this, but that drops down into a bed for some additional sleeping space. Probably the bed that more people will use, however, is right next to it, and that is your tri-fold sofa. And just like the name implies, it folds three times to form a bed. Comfortable to sit on. You can see the cushion here. You know, this is the kind of like the head of the, of the bed that folds down, and that is a comfortable bed to sleep on too, at least more comfortable than your traditional pullouts and it's not like an air mattress that's going to deflate on you in the middle of the night. I'm sure we've all had that experience. You'll also see that this is one of the few manufacturers that are currently still putting storage above the sofa instead of a larger window. A lot of manufacturers are doing, you know, big double windows in the slide out. Springdale went with the storage. Let me know what you guys think. I'm pretty torn here. I do like having a lot more light coming in, but I also understand the importance of storage, especially in a smaller fifth wheel like this. So let me know if you guys think that was the right move or if you would rather have the larger window. And along the back, as we mentioned, is that Rear Entertainment Center TV right in the middle of that. It is on a swing arm mount, so you know if you want to turn it toward the sofa or toward the recliners, I'll show you in a minute, you can do that. Windows on both sides, again, to help with that natural light. Storage all across the top, as well as storage on the bottom on both sides. In the center is your multimedia center, which is a DVD player. It's already hooked up to the TV. You have a couple speakers on the side. Underneath that, of course, is your fireplace, which not only looks great, but is an electric space heater. So if you want to take kind of the chill off in this space, you don't want to run the propane, or maybe you want to run it in conjunction with your furnace, you can certainly do that, assuming, of course, you have shore power or are running a generator. And then on the other side, on our opposing slide, are your uh, two recliners. Now, as far as chairs, as far as seats, they, they work perfectly fine. Sit here. Uh, they're a little upright, a little erect for me, if you will. Uh, they're, they're not awful, but you know, not the most comfortable things either. However, the only downside is in order to lean back, you kind of have to take the chairs. And, that, and this is uh, you know, no fault of, of Springdale or anything. It's just kind of the furniture. Uh, they don't have a great wall huggers in the RV industry unless they're built in. They do have some out there, but they're a little more pricey than what you would probably put in this price point. But once it's out, as you can see, I, mean, you know, I still can't really recline. At least I can get my feet up. But if you actually want to recline backwards, you have to pull this thing out pretty far. Uh, chances are you won't do it. But if you pull it out just a little bit, it is enough to kick your feet up, which, you know, for me anyway, that's really what I'm looking for. You'll also see that there is a little end table right there in the center, so it does give you a convenient spot to put your beverages, which again, chances are I will have one of those in my hands when I'm camping. I do pretty much the entire time. 
and windows all the way around. I will mention this, same thing on the side of the slides here, you have windows and they are functional, they do open. Lift that up for you so you can kind of see. Uh, the windows do open up so you can have some cross ventilation through the slide which is great. Your standard uh, pleated blinds there as well. Moving around into the kitchen, stainless steel looking front here, open that up. Dometic fridge freezer, pretty simple and easy to use. This one does run off both propane and electric, has automatic switch over for you. Some additional storage up top. And then the kitchen itself. So the kitchen has an upgraded thermofoil countertop. Uh, great thing about that is that you don't have to worry about any T mold popping off, which tends to happen in the corners here. And also it allows you to undermount the sink as they have done. Uh, so when you undermount it, it gives it a cleaner look as well as allows you to put, of course, the sink top cover right in there. It makes it a little more flush. Obviously they didn't use the same material, so it's not completely flush, but it's still a very usable space. Plus, because they didn't use the same material, this is cutting board, or a cutting board. So I recommend just using one side, so that way, you know, you have one side that still continues to look nice for when guests come over, and then one functional side. Underneath that is your, your sink. Now they did use a, a composite or a, a plastic sink in here. And again, I know it is a little bit price sensitive, so I understand. Um, I personally would have rather seen a stainless steel. Now, don't get me wrong, the stainless steel sinks that you would have in this price point aren't the nicest things either, right? They're still gonna scratch pretty easy. They're gonna sound very hollow. It's not gonna be like your big, thick, expensive one you'd put uh, in your house. But as far as aesthetics and durability, I personally would have rather had one of those inexpensive stainless than a composite sink. But again, let me know what you guys think. You know, is it a big deal? Is it a sticking point for you? Or are you good with the composite? You will see the high-rise faucet there as well. A decent prep space, like I'm not too upset about this, you know, especially for being a rear entertainment live, uh, layout. You do have some good prep space here. You have your recessed cooktop with a glass cover. You do have a decorative backsplash, but this kind of doubles as another one there. Uh, the front burner is high output. This is something new, Fury and Change, rather than just have a single button to turn on both your knob lights and the oven light, they kind of separated it, separated it out. So the top one there just turns on the knobs. I'll open this up so you can see. And then of course the middle is nothing. And then the bottom one lights up the knobs and the oven light. I assume they did that so that way you can have the knobs lit up, you know, if you want it for aesthetics and not burn out the oven light. Personally, I would have rather had the top just be knobs and the bottom just be the oven light. So in case I want to just look in my oven, I don't have to turn on these blue lights, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but again, that's just me, very small picky thing. You will see a couple large drawers, very deep drawers. So obviously you have plenty of room there for your uh, flatware as well as some of your larger utensils, towels, things like that, washcloths, whatever else you need. And then underneath the sink, again, you'll see this is a very open space, which I love that it is. One, it allows you spot for a trash can. Two, I would probably put something in here to store my pots and pans because otherwise you don't have a great spot but there is plenty of room underneath there for it. You'll also see storage all the way across the top. This is deep storage, you know, again, great for all of your plates, bowls, cups, everything else you'd of course have in your kitchen. Little cubby hole up top there, microwave hood with a light and a fan. Coming up the steps, you'll see here your main control panel, pretty self-explanatory there. Your tank monitoring panel is located there. Uh, your water heater does run off both gas and electric. You can turn both of those on at the same time for a faster recovery. Thermostat located right above. You do have the ducted AC as well as a ducted furnace, as you would in pretty much any fifth wheel. And then making your way into the bathroom. So here in the corner is your toilet, foot flush lever toilet, plastic bowl. Again, this is one of those I'd rather have a, a porcelain bowl just because it's easier to clean. It does add a little bit of weight. I know this one is a weight sensitive product as well as a price point sensitive product. But again, uh, I would personally rather have the, the porcelain bowl. Straight ahead of me, you'll see the sink, a little bit of countertop space there, electrical outlet, right underneath, some storage there. Mirrored medicine cabinet up top, opens out that way. Again, they went with a, a plastic uh, cabinet in here. I would have preferred to see wood just because I think it looks a lot nicer, um, but you know, again, not a not a huge not a huge deal for me. Just one of those one of those minor things. And again, I know they do it because it is a little bit more of a price sensitive product. In the corners, your neo angle shower. 
You have the roller doors, which I like because that way when you're done showering, all the water goes right down into the shower pan. You don't have to worry about, you know, water getting all over like it does with the curtain. As far as head height, I'm six foot. Without the skylight, you can still, I can uh, see, I can still clear the ceiling. With that, I have even more room. You can probably be six two, be able to shower in there without bending over. And then as we commonly see in a lot of mid profiles, you have uh, a slide out wardrobe and it is split here. That way this one is kind of like a dedicated linen closet just for the bathroom and the rest of it up here is for the bedroom. Speaking of the bedroom and as I mentioned, here is that slide out wardrobe, of course mirrors all over it, open it up, you'll see the big hanging rod so you have good space to hang your clothes. And then again, as is pretty common, you also have storage on both sides of the bed, hanging rods there, so plenty of hanging space in here. Storage across, or yeah, storage across the top there, you can see that. You have a little headboard with a couple electrical outlets, perfect spot to plug in a cell phone or a CPAP machine. Nightstand underneath with drawers. And I will take a step up here just to show you. Now again, this is kind of a mid profile. You see there's a little bit of a step up. So when I do step up here, you know, as you can see, you kind of have to duck down a little bit. Not a huge deal. And you do have pretty good space at the bottom of the bed. So generally what you do is you'll come in from one side of the bathroom or the other and just kind of crawl into bed like so. If you're a little bit shorter, you know, you might be able to get out on the side, but it's just not super convenient. And then underneath the bed, you have some storage there as well. And then last couple things. This one is prepped for a second AC. So if you plan on staying somewhere, it's really warm and you want to make sure you stay cool in the bedroom, may not be a bad idea. And if you want a TV, you will see that there is a spot to mount it right there on the wall. With the slides closed up, if you take a look up front, you will see that you have easy access to the bathroom as well as the bedroom and right in the back living area. So I did just close one of the two slides because this is the only one that's really going to matter. Now, granted, you know, this other slide will be in too, but it's not going to affect your ability to get to the refrigerator. And as you can see, you can certainly access it. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Springdale 253 FWRE. You will see the updated graphics here. It kind of has like a, a full blue front there, at least the upper three quarters. I think it's a pretty nice change in look. Um, you know, again, something a little bit different. You're not seeing a ton of it. Same basic color scheme. You can see what they had, uh, kind of the old, the early 2020 right there, late 2019, early 2020. So again, a little bit different. And I, I do like the change personally. Uh, you'll see the Rotoflex head underneath. This kingpin is great. Helps control some of the bucking and chucking there. As you start and stop the vehicle, the head will rotate, helping to uh, eliminate that pull feeling a little bit. As we take a look underneath, you'll see a very clean compartment. Keystone does a very good job at cable management up front. You will see the uh, battery compartments located over there, as well as your landing gear control. Coming around to the side, opening this guy up. 30 pound propane tank here. You'll have another 30 pounder on the other side. Open this up for you. And if you take a look in there, you will see your pass through storage compartment. So again, it's nothing super big, but that's to be expected on a mid profile. You know, you don't have any kind of drop frame construction or anything in here. Uh, you do have a little bit of plumbing that's running down that you're gonna have to contend with, but not terrible storage. Taking a look up top, you'll see the power awning, touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to have it go back in there. Couple outside speakers, you're tied to that multimedia center that we saw inside. And if you want a TV, here is a mount for it. Here is the hookups. With this particular mount, you can actually take that living room TV. You can just pop the arm right off, bring it out here, drop it in place. That way you don't have to have two TVs or have to find another spot to store one. You can just use that same television. You have the LCI solid step system, and just like the name implies, it is exactly that. Nice and solid, easy to uh, get up and down. You don't get the springboard effect. Adjustable feet, aluminum treads, so that way it won't rust on you. Also a little bit of grip tape for added traction. And then you get the foldable grab handle here for some added control when entering or exiting the RV as well. Dropping down, you will see the, uh, the nice aluminum wheels on there, so those aren't going to rust out on you, which is great. It is the black color, which, you know, again, I think it's kind of a, something a little bit different. Um, you know, you, a lot of times they just go with like a, just the aluminum look, and I think painting them black is just something a little different. Uh, you'll see right back here, you have the power stabilizer jack, so the control for it right up top. 
Rear square tubular bumper gives you a convenient spot in which you can store your sewer hose mounted to that is your spare tire. You have the roof ladder to climb up onto the roof. It is a fully walkable roof. Backup camera prep there as well. So if you want a backup camera, having the prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. As we move up on the off-door side, you'll see 50 amp detachable power cord plugs in there. Of course, it is a 50 amp because you have the second AC prep as well as a fireplace. Water inlets are located a little bit further up. City water inlet in the back, fresh water fill there right ahead of it. Outside shower with both hot and cold water access and then a black tank flush to quickly and easily wash out your black tank. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Keystone Springdale 253 FWRE. If you're interested in this fifth wheel and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they missed, or if you were designing the RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.